This is Bix Weir with today's Roadside Chat, March 2nd, 2017, write this day down. This is it, March 2nd, 2017, the day that all the staunch gold bugs were declared wrong when it comes to Bitcoin. I'm not gloating. I'm not saying anything bad about the gold bugs. I know many of them. I love them all. But you got to get out of the mindset that gold is the only monetary asset. You got to get out of the mindset that silver is the only monetary asset. The future is changing. The future of money is changing. Unless you change with it, you're going to be left behind. So why is March 2nd, 2017 such a big day? Dun, da, da. There it is. Gold and Bitcoin have crossed right around 1239 $1,239 for Bitcoin, which is now at $1,250 and moving. And gold is being held steady by the banksters as usual. Good or bad, right or wrong, reality is reality. And there are many, many reasons for Bitcoin to be running right now. Um, <clears throat> the, the biggest one is that people are waking up and recognizing that it will be a solution to our problem. And this problem is so big so gigantic, so enormous. The destruction of the unbacked fiat monetary system is at our doorstep. We have Europe falling apart, China falling apart, the United States falling apart, Mexico falling apart, Venezuela falling apart. All of these are interconnected. Europe can't go down without JP Morgan losing trillions, trillions of dollars in the derivative bets. And all these banks are interconnected. It's getting back to the very, very, very beginning road to Ruta analysis. Alan Greenspan created these computer programs to rig the market in the early 1960s to soak up as many benefits for as long as you can until one day it is unsustainable. You crash the system, get rid of all the debt, all the electronic assets as well that are unbacked. Remember, the Bitcoin is not an unbacked liability. There's no third party there. Bitcoin is an asset. And I can argue this with people day in, day out. And the worst the worst argument against Bitcoin is the one that has intrinsic value. Yeah, I, I even think I used to say it back in the early 2000s. There is no such thing as intrinsic value. Value is a perception that you, your mind creates. It has one, one thing that has value to you may not have value to somebody else. Yes, gold has had value as money since the beginning of time because it was always the best. It was the best alternative to the system that imploded. People always went back to gold. The question lies now, today, in 2017, in a world that is much different than the last 5,000 years, is gold the best monetary asset? And the markets are voting, and they're saying no. No, it's not. Bitcoin's better. And those who say, oh, Bitcoin will be gone, well, sorry. Peter Schiff, you've been wrong. <laughs> Clearly. Bitcoin has just crossed gold. You've been wrong. Will you be right tomorrow? I'm sure you'll you'll hold on to your stance and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's you know tomorrow's the day that Bitcoin implodes, or the next day, or next week, or next month, or next year. Um, but you know, for now and for the foreseeable future, I think way out until money is not needed anymore, a point in time in the future when we do not need money, when we have our basic necessities provided to us by 3D printing, by replicators, by who knows what technology is coming down the line. But today in 2017, as we go through this transaction, transition out of the unbacked fiat monetary system and into something new, one of the best tools we have is Bitcoin. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody could use it quickly. Yes, there will be an adoption period, but there will be adoption period for for gold and silver too, when the banks collapse and, and everybody loses their third party assets. So will governments and will individuals especially turn to gold or turn to Bitcoin or turn to silver? Silver, I don't think they will. I think silver is too valuable to be used as money. <laughs> We're gonna need it for these new technologies. Um, but Bitcoin is, I mean, <laughs> that's its purpose really. And it is a gift to the people that they have been given this amazing technology to help smooth the ride through this transition. 
Um, the issues with scalability, I think, will be solved by hook or by crook. But I would say at this point in time, there is no doubt that the most beneficial solution to the scaling problem is just doubling the block size. BTC Unlimited, make it cheap and easy to use for the people so that it's going to be hard enough for them to get their head around using something different than unbacked fiat money and their debit cards and credit cards. If it's cheap and it's easy to use on their cell phone and you don't have fees going through the roof, this can be implemented right away. Roger Ver is the guy who's promoting it and you need someone to promote it because the other side has the big bank money, $80 million. All these brilliant uh, computer scientists who are working on all these very complicated and, and drawn out solutions. It reminds me a lot of you know the creation of things like SLV and, and the comics and the derivative uh, markets. Um, I am not a fan of anything funded by the, the big money and they're so anti uh, blockchain unlimited solution. That's the Roger Veer uh, solution. Is is it's quick and it's easy, and we need it now. That's the big key, and it keeps the the smaller transaction fees to a minimum. No one's going to use Bitcoin or adopt Bitcoin around the world if the fees are you know twenty dollars to buy a, a five dollar cup of coffee. Well, it won't be measured in dollars, obviously, but the fees will go up, and and even the people over at uh, Segwit admit. Fees will go up. Yes, they will go up. They could go up substantially. And it just doesn't make sense for the people. The people will be starving and hurting and, and dying. And they need a solution today, not next year, not the year after. Now, they need, we, not they, we need a solution now. Bitcoin can be that solution. Um, so that's why Bitcoin's going up. And there's, there's another reason why I believe Bitcoin is going up, other than the people waking up to this new uh, form of money. And here's the reason. If you look at the Bitcoin trading volume, over this is over the past six months, and you look at it closely, it's like, oh my goodness, look at that volume rising from, and these are, uh, it's a weekly bar, so it rises from you know less than a million coins per day, and through September, October, November, and especially December, look at that. Look at that week where 65 million Bitcoin were traded in one week. And if you look at those three colored bars, they are OKCoin, BTCC, and Huobi. Those are the Chinese exchanges. Everybody's like, oh my God, the Chinese are, are uh, you know, they're trying to get their money out of China. That's why the volumes are going up. No, give me a break. Volumes are not going up because people are trying to get out of China. What happened to the price of Bitcoin when uh, the Chinese government shut down these massively rehypothecated exchanges? It went up. It went up strongly. And look at the volumes now, the overall volumes. They, they barely even show up on the chart. And yet the price of Bitcoin keeps rising. Why? Because they took out all those bars and lines. Those are all Bitcoin derivatives exchanged within these criminal exchanges, just like the Comex, just like the, the uh, stock market in New York, just like every other market. These are all derivatives of the real thing. China clamped down on the, the three exchanges, and all of a sudden, we have real Bitcoin trading. That's how cool that is. Very little derivatives going off left and right. Um, if you own Bitcoin in one of these exchanges or in an, on an online wallet, get it out. Unless they are willing to give you your private address, which gives you control of your money, you don't have control of your money. And none of the online exchanges give you your private address. None of the uh, uh, online wallets give you your private address. Make a paper wallet. There's a there's a link on my website of how to do that, and or you could just YouTube it. There's so many instructional uh, videos on how to make paper wallets or you know offline storage with a electronic wallet. I'm not, I'm a fan of it, but I I, I like to see with my own eyes my my public and private address. So yeah, look, that's exactly what happened. China clamped down on the derivatives with Bitcoin. If the U.S., the CFTC, would clamp down on the derivatives of silver, we would see the same thing. Volume would go to almost nothing. Right now, last year, silver on the, on the Commerce Exchange traded over 100 billion ounces with a B. There hasn't been, there's only been like 60 billion ounces ever mined in the history of the world. And most of that is gone. 
completely stuck into landfills and flat screen TVs and solar panels. You know, there are maybe four or five million billion ounces left on the world, and maybe two billion of those are investable type in investable forms like coins and things like that. So if you if we if the United States did to the if they did the exact same thing that China did to the Bitcoin exchanges in China, and the United States did it to the COMEX silver contracts, we would see a freely traded price of physical silver, and we would see the price of silver go skyrocketing, just like Bitcoin did after the Chinese government got in and shut down the derivative trades. And there's the, the uh, lifelong uh, price of Bitcoin. As you can see, 2014, that was the Mount Gox, 2000, into 2013, that was the Mount Gox problem. Same exact problem as what was going on in China. Mount Gox was trading in derivatives. They did not get hacked. They did not lose all their coins. What, the coins were never there. That's the problem. And as soon as all the, uh, the market participants started taking their coins out and putting them into their own wallets and putting these transactions actually on the blockchain, that's when Mt. Gox had to run away because they played the rehypothecation game. And that's how these exchanges make a lot of money. Um, so you're not going to see what happened in 2009 when the price of Bitcoin shot up to over $1,000 and then crashed when Mt. Gox get, got down and went down and claimed uh, you know somebody stole their coins. You're not going to see that. There's no Mt. Goxes out there anymore. There was at the end of last year, but the, the Chinese government actually did something good for Bitcoin and for their people because they know they're going to be moving to a, an ex, a form of money that includes Bitcoin. It's going to be gold, it's going to be silver, but it's going to be Bitcoin as well. And they know how amazingly beneficial the implementation, adoption of any country in the world, if they fully endorsed and fully adopted Bitcoin, it could change the future for that country, any country. And I think that's what we're getting into. And it, all, all it takes is one of these big banks in Europe crashing and then, you know, going to Congress for another $20 trillion bailout. There will be no bailout this time. It was never planned to be a bailout, uh, but they did it last time and we have learned our lesson. So yeah, that's Bitcoin. Get your Bitcoin. Ride the Bitcoin train. Go to Coinbase, set up an account, buy Bitcoin, and then take it out of Coinbase, and put it on your own paper wallet and use it. I'm all in the Roger Ver camp of the small transactions and the, the mass adoption of Bitcoin is, is what will ensure that Bitcoin will be viable in the future. And you got to keep those fees really low and the speed of transaction really fast. And yeah, I know there's a lot of smart guys on the other side saying, oh, you know, we got to do this, this, and this. And I would, uh, you know, Tone Bay is saying, I'd rather trust 100 brilliant uh, computer programmers. Truthfully, I wouldn't. Not not in the in the least. If you remember, long term capital management hired the most brilliant uh, mathematicians and st statisticians, and you know they had on their board were these Nobel Prize winners. And what happened? <laughs> they started out great, and one day they woke up and the couple black swans hit and crashed everything. The Federal Reserve had to bail them out of five billion dollars. That's what happens when arrogance gets into the mix and they think they're so smart that they know everything stick with what works bitcoin unlimited it works it can be implemented fast and it's the cheapest way to go for individuals using it for individual everyday transactions and that's what we're going to turn to so fast i mean literally when these banks go down there'll be no debit cards there'll be no credit cards there'll, there'll be no paper cash after like a couple months no one have enough to make change it won't be viable what will be viable is Bitcoin if it is cheap and fast. And that's why I endorse 100% the, the Bitcoin unlimited solution to scaling. Either way, Bitcoin will be fine. But here's the problem. If the crash happens, what will be adopted as the most likely currency? If, it's, if Bitcoin is too expensive and too slow, I'll guarantee you all countries and all people will go to gold and silver. And they'll kind of forget about Bitcoin. It would be another long hill to climb up. But it'll get there someday, but it'll be a very long hill to climb up. Meanwhile, the solutions are being made at the Federal Reserve and at the U.S. Treasury and at the banks. Uh, and we don't want that. We want solutions by the people, for the people, of the people. 
and get Bitcoin into the hands of everyone and keep the transaction cost almost nothing. And that's the only way people are going to believe in, in Bitcoin going forward. All right, that is my soapbox for March 2nd. Uh, great day. Bitcoin crosses gold. I, I, at some point, and you're gonna, you want to write this down, some point in the very near future, all central banks around the world will be printing money to buy Bitcoin. Printing money to buy Bitcoin. That's how strong the future of, of Bitcoin is. And, and I think it, it is, we are just in barely the beginning days. So load up on Bitcoin. Load up on silver if they ever let it uh, trade freely, which I, I think they will. I think that's part of the plan. Um, and then hang on for a, a freaking crazy ride throughout the rest of the year as, as the old system implodes and you, you ride the wave uh, into a brand new world. Good luck, everybody. This is Bix Weir. Go to roadtoruta.com. Put in your email address so you can get uh, daily updates and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Road to Ruta. Take care.